Hackers are everywhere. From Ashley Madison to JP Morgan, from Jennifer Lawrence to the federal government, our biggest celebrities, corporations, and institutions have all been the targets of devastating cyber attacks. I wanted to see how bad a hack can get. So I invited a few of the world's best hackers to try to hack me and show me where my vulnerabilities are. And now I'm gonna meet them in Las Vegas at DEF CON, the biggest hacker convention of the year, and see what they found. This might not have been the best idea. DEF CON is the biggest hacker convention of the year. It's a place where thousands of hackers come to hear talks to demonstrate their newest hacks. It's actually a place that's so dangerous to, to be on the internet that they tell you to turn off the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth on your phone. And they tell you not to use the ATMs too because those could be hacked as well. This is the DEF CON ballroom. It's sort of the main room where things are happening, and it's pretty wild. I think this is Car Hacking Village. This car is locked. Can you get me in? I'll unlock it for you. It should be good. <laughs> <laughs> Hacking is no longer like this fringe activity, and if you are at DEF CON, there's a good chance that you're here because you want to learn what could happen to you or your company. Anyone here first time in the SCCTF? Holy crap. I invited Chris to hack me uh, with his team, um, but they're gonna hack me using social engineering, which is essentially hacking without any code. They just use a phone and an internet connection. We help people with human security issues by testing vulnerabilities for, um, for like a network test, but it's for the people network. We test those vulnerabilities, see where the holes are, and then help people learn so they can patch them. Can we try some of this? Can we try some, Yeah. see I if think, it works? Yeah, we, we probably could uh, have our star visher here make some phone calls as <laughs> we go Let's do first. it. Sure, do you want to do a sample vishing call? What's vishing? Vishing is voice solicitation, and basically um, what you do is you use the phone to extract information or data points that can be used in a later attack. Let's do it. Will okay. you, who are you going to call? Maybe I'll call your cell phone provider okay. and see if I can get them to give me your email address. I, I bet they're good. I bet they have my back. <laughs> but yeah, go, go for it. I'm going to spoof from your number, so it's going to look like it's calling from you. OK. Hi. I'm actually, I'm so sorry. Can you hear me OK? I, my baby, I'm sorry. <laughs> my. <laughs> my husband's like, we're about to apply for a loan, and we just had a baby, and he's like, get this done by today, so I'm so sorry, I can't I, um, call you back. <laughs> I'm trying to log into our account for uses information, and I can't remember what email address we used to log the account. The baby's crying, and um, can, can you help me? Awesome. In just 30 seconds, Jessica gets my personal email address. Um, now, if I needed to um, add our older daughter on our account so she could call in and make changes, how would I need to go about doing that? You would have to send me a secure pin through a text message? Yeah, well, the thing is, I don't think I'll be able to receive a text message if I'm on the phone. Shh, shh, shh. Oh, I'm not on there either? I, so I thought when we got married, um, he added me to the account. Okay, my Jessica name is uses my girlfriend's name and a fake social security number 5127 to set up her own personal access to my account. Wait, I'm sorry, so there's no password on my account right now? Can I set that up? She no even gets the support name. person to change my password. Thank you so much for your help today. So she just no, basically blocked me out of my own account. I'll get her fed after this. <laughs> All right, thank you. Holy shit. So they they just gave they just gave you access to my entire cell phone account. You're gonna have to go on and change your password now because it's Jess, my name. And all it took was a crying baby and a phone call. Yes. I really thought that my cell phone company would protect me. I mean, like, this is the most basic stuff, and and they're not doing it. And if they're not doing it, you know, all these other businesses aren't doing it either. Anyone with a phone and an internet connection can do social engineering. But I was curious, what can a hacker with serious coding skills do? Well, DEF CON is the world's biggest hacking convention. It's hacking everything, hacking uh, social, hacking hardware, hacking software, hacking various systems. I asked Dan Tentler, a well-known security researcher, to turn all of his firepower on me. I did get into quite a number of things that I found. So what were the first things you did? How did you start hacking me? Uh, I quickly found your Squarespace blog and had an idea. Uh, basically what I did was created a bogus 
Squarespace site and sent an email to you, um, a fish asking you to go to this website, run this certificate installer. And I did it, because yeah. I'm an idiot. So once you ran that, uh, it gave me access to your computer and I created several fake pop-ups that looked like system pop-ups uh, that would ask you for your credentials. You didn't even have to have my passwords. No, you gave them to me. I gave them to you. Yeah. So I, I stole your 1Password keychain that's and one password is where I store all my other passwords. So effectively by- And your social security number and your Amex stuff and all your stock trading and bank information. I can send email to everyone in this room as you. I am you right now if I wanted to be. If my evilness is working correctly, it should actually be taking pictures of your desktop and pictures through your webcam every two minutes. And I have been watching you for about two days now. In oh coffee shops, at your mom's house, on a plane, Here's you editing stuff, there's you like Oh my god, so this is literally Every two minutes through my webcam. Yeah, through this guy. How badly could you have messed up my life? I could have made you homeless. I could have made you homeless and penniless. How? I, how how would you make me homeless? Like I have control of you your digital life in its entirety. I have all your credentials, I have all your access to all your financial information, all your work information, all your personal information. I can pay people with your bank account or your Amex account. I am you. I can fully impersonate, like the only thing I couldn't doctor would be like your fingerprints. This is like as bad as it gets. It's ridiculous, yeah, it's bad. So it turns out that Dan Tentler is very good at his job. I mean, he hacked the hell out of me. He got everything. Well, I mean, frankly, I wanna take my computer and throw it into the deepest part of the ocean and I wanna become a hermit and I wanna never touch a piece of technology again because Holy shit, that was that was everything. That was the keys to my entire life. And he just he just pulled them out of his pocket. But even if I keep my passwords and my bank accounts safe, I could still be in danger from hacks. Because with factories, power plants, and other major infrastructure being controlled by network computers, the world itself is hackable. I'm going to meet Marina Kurdafil. She's studying hacking chemical plants. She's thinking about what happens if hackers decide to go after infrastructure. But this is the kind of hacking that could really ruin like an entire country. Who should be most worried about chemical plant hacking? Well, pretty much every, uh, every plant, because big business beats big money. So the hackers are always there where the money are, so it's a good target. So, for example, the most uh, common cause is extortion. A large number of extortion attacks has happened already, and our critical infrastructure is vulnerable. So, uh, uh, let's just say like a nuclear power plant could have a big accident, and they think our machine just malfunctioned, our safeguards didn't work, but it's actually someone hacking. Yes, but the worst case scenario, if it will be incompetent or unskillful attacker who does not understand what he's breaking in and that they will do something what, uh, with a large or extensive collateral damage. But probably most scariest is hacking the satellites because now everything navigates with the GPS. So basically even uh, the huge oil tankers in the sea, they're completely navigated automatically by the signals from the satellites. So by si simply disrupting the satellite signals, you can lose the entire tanker and uh, or the aircraft can collide. And, and, and it, to me, it seems obvious, like this is how war will be conducted in the future. But it's much easier than sending a million ground troops in or, you know, it's, or buying you know, drones to fly over uh, an enemy state. Like this is, we're, we're sort of looking at the future of not just infrastructure, but like global conflict. There's almost too much for me to worry about here. I'm almost just sort of numbed. People keep telling me, oh, this could get hacked, and that could get hacked, and this other thing could get hacked, and oh, the chemical plants could get really hacked. And at some point, like, I've got to get out of bed in the morning. So I have to find a way to make myself feel a little bit better about all of this. So I'm meeting Morgan Marquibois, a cybersecurity consultant and the director of security at First Look Media, for some advice on locking down my digital life. Should I be feeling helpless or, or can I help myself here? Do you worry about trained martial artists beating you up in the street? Not particularly. But you're aware that they exist. You're also aware that you probably couldn't do anything about it if one of them wanted to beat you up in the street. Probably not. Right? And I mean, you can actually possibly think about the danger that hacking poses 
to you right now in much the same terms. But the first step is actually thinking sanely about digital security, which most people don't do. So for instance, you know, how do we protect our physical integrity? Maybe we don't walk down the dodgy alley at night, right? People who haven't spent any time thinking about digital security don't actually know what the dodgy alleys of the internet are. Like, should I click that link? You know, maybe I shouldn't install the software. And I thought I was pretty good. Like, I thought it's, I was... It's tough. But chances that a skilled black hat is deciding for no reason whatsoever to attack you, I mean, it's, it's actually reasonably small. Like, it sort of begs the question why, right? You could hire security people to, uh, you know, look after your online life. But you probably don't need to do that. We used to think of hackers as being sort of fringe characters, but now when so much of our lives are lived on these connected devices, they're power brokers. They can make or break us. I'm trying to log into our account. They stole your 1Password keychain. I mean, they know more about this stuff than anyone, and that's a power that is going to become increasingly valuable. We need to know where our flaws are so that we can be safer. And I think the best thing to do is to enable them to help us rather than shoo them away. Do you guys have any of those little things that you put over the, the camera on your laptop? Paradoxically, I feel more secure now than I did last week. Because now at least I know what I have to fix.